Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, back several months ago, I acquired a new machine for the shop, did a video on it, and never really followed up on it too much, and mainly just because I've had so much going on, I haven't had the time to do it, and I really haven't had a job to run on this machine yet, and I, and I still don't. I've got some things that need to be done long-term that it's gonna get used for, but I haven't had an opportunity to actually use it yet. But after I acquired this machine, I started rounding up a bunch of just parts and pieces for it, attachments, accessories, uh, some things like that. So what this is, this is a Kearney Trekker Model 2D, what they call a rotary head mill machine. It's a really cool machine. It was uh, kind of designed back in the day for uh, guys doing mostly die making work, but you could use it for any kind of milling jobs. And it was really designed before the days of CNC, but it allowed you to do a lot of those things that you just can't really do very effectively on a typical milling machine. Very rigid machine, you got your knee here, you got your, your cross slide. Notice that the cross slide is all one solid piece and this table slides back and forth. So it's extremely stable. You got your X and your Y. Of course, you got your a, a quill in here where you can uh, lower your head down. This one actually has a little crank on it on the side to raise and lower the head. But what is really unique about this machine is that the entire spindle, in addition to rotating with a cutter in it, you could actually crank this right here and you could move the, the, the spindle in and out and you could basically swing an arc with it, swing a circle with it. So it really has a lot of versatility. And in addition to that, they had a bunch of accessories for this machine that will allow you to do even more cool things. Now, when I bought the machine, it came with some collets, it came with a few things, but it didn't really have any of the accessories. And I went out on in search of some of those as well as some parts uh, that I was needing for it. And what I wanna do today is kind of show some of the things that we have acquired for this mill that's pretty cool um, and just kind of share it with you guys. So I'm gonna get kind of get into it and show you some of the stuff we picked up. So the first thing I'm gonna show is the chairing attachment that goes on this machine. Now, this is a really cool uh, item that you, I picked up and I got this from uh, Tom Herring, who uh, actually had one and was kind enough to send it along to me. Uh, I can't remember the exact story on this. It seems like he bought it at a, a garage sale or something like that. And I, I, don't, I don't remember, it's, it's been a long time. But anyway, he had one, I was able to acquire it from him. And this is a really neat attachment. Like we said, the rotary head on this allows you to kind of move your cutter around in a, in a diameter or a radius or an arc or whatever. And it gives a whole nother range of motion to this machine. When you put the chairing head on here, and the way this does is, and I'm not going to mount it right now, you have to take some parts off. It bolts up here on the side of the machine and kind of fits over on the side kind of like this. And with some settings in here, basically, it duplicates or, or does the same axis of control on those swinging those radiuses, but instead of being in the, uh, this plane coming around here, it's gonna be going up and down. So it allows you to be, go, like, go down into a hole and mill a, a, a circular hole in the bottom. Between the rotary head and this head, you can actually mill a spear. Uh, which is really cool on this milling machine. No computers at all, it's all mechanical. So anyway, I'm gonna kind of show you, I got a, a, a instructions here. Let me, I'm gonna show you some, an example of some of the uh, spherical and conical shapes that they're able to, to mill using one of these uh, chairing attachments. So as you can see here, you know, here's a partial spear that they were able to mill. You can go down in here and mill out grooves in the bottom. You can mill out a, a radius in there. So again, these were used mostly in making dies and so forth like that, but it has all kinds of practical applications that you can use it for. And it really adds a whole nother level of uh, functionality with this, this mill and making an extremely versatile machine. So I'm again, really excited to have that. The chairing attachment, like I said, uh, just it gives the same range of motion in the vertical plane that we have in the horizontal plane um, with just a 2D by itself. And again, just really neat feature. So anyway, pick that up, very glad to have that. I'm gonna have to, at some point in time, get that thing mounted up on here and play with it. There's a, uh, a lot 
to learn how to use this, as you can imagine, and uh, I have no clue where to even start. So it's going to have to just, uh, I'm just going to get in here and start playing with it. Like I said, I got some instructions, uh, but it's going to probably take me a day or two of just playing with it just to figure out how to use some of these features. But I'm kind of anxious uh, to do that one day when I have some time. Next items here is an assortment of some collets and so forth that fit this machine. And uh, when I got it, it had a couple of collets with it. And this one thing that's kind of unique about this is it takes a unique collet. This is a Kearney Trekker. Uh, it's basically a 40 taper collet. It has a 40 taper on it like you would use in a, in a modern miller machine, but it's, it's a modified version. It doesn't fit, it, a regular 40 taper thing doesn't direct, directly fit into this. Uh, it is a modified version of it that's pretty much specific to this machine. Uh, I was looking for some collets. Uh, Greg Kopp, who is one of the viewers out there, he uh, does some volunteer work at the uh, Midwest Railway Preservation Society. They've got a museum uh, in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, he sent me some information on there. And uh, he was in the shop and he, in a cabinet, in a, in a drawer, in a toolbox somewhere, they had a bunch of these parts, uh, these collets and stuff. He had no idea what they even went to until he saw my video and realized that, hey, that's for a 2D. They don't have a 2D at their museum. So it was just something that had, they had acquired at some point in time. They had no real need for it. Uh, he contacted me, told me he had it, and um, I was able to work out a deal with the museum. Basically, I made a donation to the museum and they sent me these parts. Uh, so it worked out really good for everyone involved. Um, what I got here, again, just some miscellaneous collets in different sizes. This fits directly into the spindle. Uh, there's a couple of extra spindle caps. This basically screws on the bottom. The collet's got a bottom taper that fits up in there and it goes up into the top taper up in the spindle. And when you tighten this up, it tightens the collet up. So uh, there's a couple extra here. Uh, also, this is uh, that, that 30 taper. Did I say 40 taper a while ago? I think this is a 30 taper actually, uh, but this will fit up in there and it goes down to an even smaller taper. So, and that's what these small collets here fit up into. So when you get to the smaller size, you actually use this adapter and go to a smaller version. And he had a couple of those collets as well and a couple of these uh, tool holders. So this will be nice. I can actually set some of these up uh, since I have multiples with different collets and not have to change the collets out every time, I can just uh, basically have those set up and ready to go. Um, this is just a, uh, what is that? That's, okay, that's got a screw on the end there. So that's a, an adapter to go up in here that you would screw into another tool or something. I'm not sure exactly what it was intended for, but uh, I can see where you would have something that this just screws down into and then that would uh, allow you to drive something else uh, on here. So I'm sure we can adapt that to something as well. So Greg, uh, thank you very much for being so kind as to remembering that you guys had this stuff and uh, working out a deal with me. And hopefully my little contribution to your museum will help out in exchange and uh, really want to get up and vis visit the, their museum up there. They have a roundhouse there in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, anybody that's in that area, I encourage you to go take a, take a look at them sometime, the Midwest Railway Preservation Society. Um, yeah, I gotta have to put that on my bucket list too. And thanks for the little patch. Next item here, uh, this comes from Brett Maddock and this actually came all the way from the United Kingdom in Wales. Uh, and again, something that one of my viewers out there had, had it, didn't really need it, and, uh, but was kind enough to send it along. He actually sent this to me globally uh, across the pond uh, over here. So this is what's called the universal head that mounts on this machine. And basically this uh, slides up over the spindle, you clamp it on there, there's a drive shaft that goes from here down into this head. And when this mounts up on there, you've got this piece on the end that can rotate around to whatever angle you wanna mill and you can have this head at an angle. Additionally, you can, of course, rotate the head. So if you need to swing an arc that has like a 30 degree bevel on it or something with an end mill, you can actually swing that thing all the way around with this thing. Really, really versatile uh, tool. In addition, you can dial in whatever angle you want to on it uh, that uses the smaller uh, 
collets that we showed a minute ago. So there's one of them in there. Um, and it even has a quill on this thing. So you could even come in there and, and uh, drill with it or move up and down on the spindle in it with it. So again, very versatile machine or attachment. And this is what, again, they called the universal attachment. And uh, again, very nice, uh, nice addition, nice thing to have here in the shop. Uh, really excited and, and looking forward to an opportunity to be able to, to give that thing a try. Kind of related to uh, this over here, I've also got this uh, part off of one of these. And this came from Lee Karlstrom up in Utah. And he actually sent this one to me before I got the head, before I realized I'd found the head. All he had was just the part that bolts up on the front here. So it's not a complete unit. Um, and I, again, something he had, has no use for, send it along to me. At the time I was like, yes, yeah, send it to me. I don't know if I'll ever need parts or whatever. So anyway, I've got this right here. It's actually um, extra for me now. So if anybody out there is looking for some parts for one of these things, let me know and maybe we can work something out. Uh, Cause this, uh, now that I got a complete head, um, I don't know that I need an extra one, but anyway, thought I'd show that real quick. And thank you Lee for sending it along. Hopefully we'll be able to uh, find it a home where it can uh, rescue someone else's machine. You can see the backside of it there where it uh, bolts up on there. So up here now is a bunch of little parts and pieces. And this is actually just part of what I got from uh, another viewer. And this just came from Chris Brent, who is just uh, south of the Chicago area. And uh, Chris reached out to me uh, when he saw my video and told me that he had had a, a 2D mill in his shop that he runs up there. In fact, I think it was his grandfather had purchased one brand new from K&T back in the 60s and uh, ran it for years and years and years. Uh, I think he's third generation in that shop now. His grandfather, his dad, and now him is running it. And um, he said it really, really pained him to do it. But several years ago, the, the 2D was just... It was in the shop, they weren't using it. Uh, it was in the way and they tried to, to sell it. They couldn't find a buyer for it. And they ended up just having to get it out of the way and they ended up scrapping it, which uh, he said it broke his heart. But he said, before he scrapped it, he said, I just, I had, to, I had to take parts off of it and save as much of it as I could. So he saved a bunch of parts for it. And actually, I, like I said, this is just part of what I got from him. I got a bunch of just parts off of that machine. I'll put some pictures in here and show you this. In the, I got all those parts in another building right now. I can't really show it all to you, uh, but there's the the uh, the drive boxes for for both the uh, the X and the Y axis or the heads. It's, it's got. I mean, he basically anything he could take off that machine, he took off of it. And uh, he made me a deal. I purchased all this stuff from him. In addition to the parts and pieces that you see here, uh, we got some collets, there's drill chuck, um, there's a, a uh, uh, what do you call this, the, an adapter to put on a, um, a shell mill holder. So you can put like a, a milling head or something like that on there that would fit up in the spindle. It's got some of the stops and things. Actually, mine was missing a few of the stops. It's got some of those that go on here. Uh, and also another universal head. Uh, he had the drive gear for it. The, uh, the one we got from the UK did not have the drive gear. This is what actually powers this. This fits up in the spindle. So this one is complete. And also this is another accessory. Again, this fits up on here. This is a right angle attachment. So you would put a collet in the little chuck here and it's similar to this head but this only does 90 degrees so it's set 90 degrees you could put it in there and uh, move that around so um, I don't believe that some of this stuff has ever even been used um, I think his grandfather just bought a bunch of the accessories and wasn't sure whether he would need them or not um, I will say on the parts that I have um, I, there were several of the parts that I needed for my mill uh, or we'll be putting it on if I haven't already, but I got a bunch of parts that I have no need for. If anybody out there is looking for parts for a 2D mill, 
let me know what you're looking for. I'll look and see what I have. And uh, if I've got it, I'll try to make you a good deal on it. He took all the hand wheels off of it, uh, the, some of the doors and stuff. Actually, I'm gonna use the, the, on the top of mine, the top of, of mine had a crack in it. So I'm actually gonna pull the old one off and put the new one that he had on there because it's in good shape. So, uh, but anyway, if you're looking for parts, let me know. If I can, uh, again, help you out, I'd be glad to get some of that stuff out of my shop and uh, where we can put it on a machine and, and hopefully help save it. So anyway, Chris, thank you very much for your deal. Uh, I went up a couple of months ago. I was not too terribly far from there and I swung through and picked all this stuff up and brought it back um, into my shop. Up next, got a collection of collets that were sent in to me by Matt uh, Keltica. I think that's how you say that, in Kansas. Uh, he had, again, a bunch of these laying around, didn't have a need for them, uh, saw the video, and uh, he was able to send these along. And this is really, really nice because this is pretty much a full, complete set of collets and all the different sizes between uh, the bigger ones as well as the smaller ones. Again, you use these little adapters to put these little ones in. Uh, but between this now, I, I do have a full set of collets and I also picked up some collets from in a couple other collections that came in from some various places. So uh, very nice to have all the collets I need for this machine and even a couple of, the, a couple of spares uh, if, in case one breaks. Actually, these collets were prone to break. Um, you know, there's not, a, particularly on these little thinner ones, there's not a whole lot in there. You use them a lot. And I've actually got, when I got my meal, there was a couple of broken collets that were in there. So definitely gonna keep some spares just in case uh, we, we break a collet at some point in time. But anyway, very nice set here. And uh, I think, like I said, I got a full set of collets for this, which I did not have before. And I was looking hard to find some. So very happy uh, to, to be able to have all these collets. And Matt, thanks for sending these along. So I think this is kind of the last thing I've got over here related to the mill that we've kind of acquired. And this came to me from uh, Jim Kunka, I think is how you say his name, at Engineer's Workshop, another YouTuber out there. He has one of these 2D mills and we uh, were conversing back and forth a while back. I actually uh, helped him find a couple of little things he was looking for on his. I uh, was able to get out of my parts that I got out of the other machine. Uh, that I bought the parts off of. But he was kind enough to send along a spanner wrench. This is a brand new spanner wrench. I think he drew it up in CAD uh, for his and he got one cut out and sent it to me here. In fact, it's still in the, uh, in the shrink wrap. I'm going to go ahead and take it out. And what this is used for is there's a collar on here that you can loosen up and tighten up on the bottom and that fits perfectly, just like you want. So a little tab on the front catches in there and you can uh, tighten and loosen that up. So Jim, thanks very much. Um, I think on his, he actually used his mill to relieve the handle to make it a little more comfortable to use. That may be something we try at some point in time. I think that'd be a, a good little use of the milling machine and uh, try it out on something because I haven't actually used this on a project yet. So anyway, and he sent along a couple of decals from his channel as well, Engineer's Workshop, go check him out on YouTube. Uh, he's got some content of him using uh, one of these mills on there. So with the stuff that I've been able to gather up on this thing so far, um, we are making good headway toward really kind of fully tooling this machine. We've got the chairing attachment, which we talked about. I've got the universal milling attachment, picture of it there, and the right angle milling attachment, picture of it there kind of working. Uh, there are a couple of accessories that I haven't found for this machine yet and kind of on the lookout for if anybody knows of where they might be. There is uh, what they call the slotting and cornering attachment, which is basically kind of like a shaper head that you can put on it that makes a tool that just kind of goes up and down. You can use it for slotting out a keyway or something like that. Yeah, one of those things, I don't know that I'd ever need it, but it'd be nice to have if I could uh, put my hands on one. Um, let's see, other things, rotary table. I do have a, a k and rotary table that will fit on this mill. Uh, there was an option for a drive system that comes off of the, the table that will actually 
turn the rotary table while it's in operation. In fact, if you look at this picture on the front, you kind of see this little oval shaped box that sits on the top of the of um, your gearbox down here. Mine does not have this accessory. That was something that was optional. Mine just has a plate on the top of that. Uh, again, I would love to find one of those attachments. In fact, uh, when I got all of my parts and pieces for it, um, there's the little cover that goes on the end of that, but the little attachment itself is missing. So um, basically this just has some gearing in there and there's a drive shaft that goes over to the rotary table to power it. I would love to be able to find that piece as well. And uh, again, kind of uh, fully equip this, uh, this little mill in case I ever needed it for something. Well, that was the main thing I wanted to kind of go over on this video was kind of go over some of the stuff that we had acquired for the mill. Uh, it's been piling up over here and I've been wanting to get things kind of put up and organized but wanted to make sure uh, we gave credit to folks uh, that sent stuff in or are purchasing. Some of that was stuff I purchased. Some of it was actually gifts from viewers. Uh, I will say again, if anybody knows of those couple of parts that I'm still looking for, um, yeah, contact me, shoot me an email or whatever. I would definitely be interested. Uh, if you've got a 2D mill and you're looking for parts or whatever, if, uh, you know, let me know that as well. Uh, some of my extra stuff that I have accumulated for this mill, uh, we can definitely move it along someplace else that, that could use it. Uh, you know, talk to me, we can trade, I'll make you a deal on it, whatever, as long as it's surplus to me. Uh, and like I said, I got all those parts that came off that other milling machine that uh, I've kind of already gone through those and gotten the parts out that I need. And I know I've already um, helped out several guys that were looking for some of those parts and pieces and already uh, found a home for some of that. But if you're, if you got broken, missing, whatever parts off of one of these mills, let me know. Uh, I may or may not have it, but I can always look and see. And if I do, you know, maybe we can help get your machine back up and uh, running fully. So guys, with that, I'm going to sign off. That's uh, pretty much all we got on this video today. Hopefully be able to uh, use this mill coming up in some projects here pretty soon. It's ready to go. I just haven't really had a project really suitable to use it for yet. Uh, but I've got, I know I got some things that need to be done uh, sometime in the foreseeable future that this mill is going to be perfect for. And who knows the kind of projects that we might run into down the road that it can also uh, come in handy for. So with that, we're going to sign off. As always, thanks for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up and comments are greatly appreciated. It helps, uh, uh, helps the site be able to be found on YouTube. It helps with the algorithms over there. Uh, guys, big huge thank you to the subscribers out there who subscribe. Big huge thank you to the supporters who support the site financially through PayPal and Patreon. There's links down in the description below if that's something you can help out with. Uh, it really enables me to be able to take the time to shoot these videos and put them together, take the time that it takes to do all that work uh, if, if you help out there as well. And uh, guys, with that, we'll catch you on the next video again. Thanks for watching.